Hey heroes, welcome back. Sir Matt and Sir Ezra here again. Uh, we got some exciting news. We we got some Q and A, Sir Matt. Like Rafe is out there answering some questions to kind of celebrate the wrapping of season one. They've got it done, and uh, even a little image of I guess what would be a script, right, for the start to season two. And we're gonna talk about all of this: the Instagram story, the Q and A. We're going to go point by point here. But let me just pose very quickly a question to you. I know you've read these. I know if you've come here and you're checking this video out that you've seen this. Are we, I mean, if we don't have a color changing cloak, are we in trouble? Is this destined to fail without the color changing cloak? As let me actually comment on the color changing cloak because can I just go to that? That yeah, here? yeah. Will Land's cool cloak be featured in the show? I love Land's cloak in the show, but much like I said, I agelessness. It's in a it's an effect that's going to cost a fortune every time a character is on screen. It's a bad use of money unless you want to see all of season one in the Wine Spring Inn. Then you can have color changing cloaks. Now let me let me. Um, <laughs> Let me just actually respond to that, actually, <laughs> because I'm all I, I'm fine. I'm totally personally fine with the cloak yeah. not changing color. Yeah, yeah. But as there are literally people on YouTube that like go in and are like, "Hey, I'm gonna re-edit this scene in Star Wars and give it like, you know, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Kylo Ren a blue lightsaber." They just do it on their own. Uh -huh. It's actually not really like that expensive. I mean, Amazon's Lord of the Rings show is getting a budget of $500 million. That's more than, like, Avengers and Star Wars. And you're telling me you can't just change one guy's cloak? Because everyone who's talked about the budget on this show has said, oh, it's huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, I'm fine with they them spend not it? doing it. It's a lot. <laughs> it looked weird. But I know. That's what I'm saying, man. Like. Uh, what if, the, what if they just gave him a different a different colored cloak every time he's in like a different scene or something? Could you yeah? And it didn't actually. We well, didn't what see if he just change. did it like it was... once or twice? And it, it, what if he like what if he what if he changed it for like a perfect a purpose? Right? Like when they go to Camelin and oh the reds and the whites and the different and suddenly yeah, the, yeah. his cloak changes and yeah. so you gave it like some sort of like purpose or something but yeah i don't know you know but let's get to these questions here because yeah. i think i think i think a lot of it just has to do with the the image that we've been sharing and hopefully you'll share this image that we just yeah, keep so passing well. back and forth of of rafe <laughs> on survivor i tweeted at him today he did not respond i said can somebody whose light has actually gone out you know, because his light got extinguished on Survivor. Did you really now, tweet this? He doesn't have it. I did. <laughs> I tweeted at him. I was hoping he'd answer He's gonna the Q and A, but he did. Rafe, we're just how messing, can his light? But... How can his how can his light shine upon us if it's if it's out? His I don't I actually don't know. Like that, it may, you said that to me, and I thought, has he been gentled? Like what is going? You know, he might be. Oh my god! Here we go. Let, all right, let, let's actually get to some of the, some of these questions. No, we're all just right. joking. We we. I don't know if we like Rafe yet or not, but we well, we the, like it, it Rafe. Remains, it remains to be ah, uh, we remains. Okay, so um, <laughs> to celebrate the wrap of season one this Tuesday, and okay, so he's he's going on here. So he says, "What is the average running time of each episode?" He said, "Amazon is great because each episode doesn't have an exact time limit, like the time limit, like you do a network television, and these episodes are epic. So we're clocking in between fifty to sixty-five minutes." each so i think that's good and yeah you know sometimes we saw that you know like mandalorian last season it would be like one episode is 27 minutes the next one's 50. you just tell you yeah. the story you're gonna tell in that episode i'm fine if, if an episode is shorter or longer to me I, I tell the story you need to tell in that episode yeah you know but them being longer for probably eight episodes you know that's good that's i i think that's good i i really was encouraged by that because um like you, I don't like when things are kind of confined and, and I'm really glad that it kind of reassures your, your, uh, viewer, your audience, the fandom that, Hey, we're going to just do, we're going to tell a naturally paced story, you know, with ups and downs and, and the whole, the whole nine yards. So I like that. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. I, and, and I, I, I think also, you know, I prefer, I think I, I think 
television is best told actually through this Netflix style eight to 10 episodes, roughly an hour long, as opposed to the network television, which is like 26 episodes, 30 minutes sometimes. And a lot of it just ends up being these filler episodes because they have to produce all this content. I mean, I'd much rather just watch scenes that matter than have it, have it be have it be filler. So, yeah. Yep. Um, OK, so congratulations on a season one wrap. Blink twice if the trailer is coming soon and it's just a face going like this. What? So, no trailer. No trailer anytime, anytime soon. soon. Like, anytime so. Soon. I mean, again, I we totally kid, but what's Are going we, on? <laughs> what? I, I know it's pandemic because well, he does address the, really, the pandemic later. Right. I still think you could have done a trailer with everything that had been shot. It seems like most of episodes one through six were shot. I mean, how could you not get a trailer of that? Most TV trailers. Let's go back to the Mandalorian just as an example. The trailer was all episodes one through four. The first trailer of Mandalorian season two. We only saw stuff episodes one through four. Yeah. And we were hyped out of our minds. Yeah. We were hyped out of our minds. Uh, yeah, it's a very good point because you don't have to. There's going to be action in the first. And that's why the teaser, we all know we've seen just some Beltine, uh, Moraine, right. and Land doing their thing, fighting off some Trollocs. And he does even address later on the issue with that expanded kind of uh, Trolloc that we saw. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, do the actors perform stunts on their own or do they have doubles? Since everyone on the show has a stunt double, but most of our actors are really amazing with the physical stuff and doing their own stunts. I'm the only one who's always falling as please cue the uh, image of him on Survivor <laughs> falling into the river. Uh, so, <laughs> Oh my God. I, I didn't even know that existed prior to like, we're turning who... into a meme. I know. I don't really watch Survivor, well, so Rafe, looked. you know. Yeah, I know. I, I couldn't. Either. I was like, I went, wow. I went, I went and looked. I was like, let me go see this guy in Survivor, and it's just him falling into a river. <laughs> well, he's like holding onto the rope, and so his head's like under the water. So hey, it's clutch just, on. It, it's gonna be a on. meme for the next. It's gonna be a meme for the next eight, however many seasons. So, uh, how do you feel about having wrapped season one? He says, to be totally honest, it hasn't fully hit me yet. There's still so much to be done to get the show ready to air and get season two shooting um, that while I was drinking my celebratory champagne on set after the last shot Tuesday someone grabbed me to tackle uh, three new problems that had come up and I had to leave so yeah I mean we're gonna I think they're gonna talk about this a little bit but season two I is rumored to be starting like next month so mm -hmm. there it seems like they're gonna do this yeah. whole get all of this going which is good which is, yeah which is which is good uh, can, can I say real quick? I just Here. this is I, I like that he address. I think this is this stuff is kind of neat because I almost sent him a question like if there's gonna is there gonna be like a documentary because I'm into that kind of behind the scenes. What was it like? Because there is something to be said that they finished the first six episodes. They had to wait months. I mean, a huge gap goes by. You have to halt everything, move possibly locations. I bet there's some pretty crazy stuff that went down behind the scenes to get this done so anyways i just can't i think it's interesting to say like hey how do you feel after that's wrapped i hope that's captured somewhere in a documentary yeah. it'd be, be kind of cool yeah absolutely um what character that didn't appear in season one and does appear in season two are you most excited about starts with an e l <sighs> So there's two characters that I think that could be, obviously. I think number one is the character who I, I'm at this point sure is not in season one, and that's Elaine. That's, that's Elaine. who we thought. We were said, are we going to see Elaine? Are we going to see Elaine season one? Um, just judging on where it seemed like all everything was leading to, which was, you know, our, our initial reports. So you and I, I think I actually were correct i think we you and i were more correct in our initial reporting you and i said i think we're gonna get somewhere in the middle of the great hunt season one and everyone's like no they're gonna finish the great hunt it's confirmed like it's yeah. like they, they said we're gonna do two books a thing um now to me that's t that's the, off the table and it's it's a blend it's it's a blend there's gonna be stuff um i think you and i are both uh, on the we we said on, on our podcast that I think a lot of the low gain stuff is getting moved way 
up because we're in book five on the podcast now and we're just getting into Loghain stuff. But the fact that Loghain has been cast when he has an incredibly small role in season one and then doesn't really do much uh, up into where we're at right now in book five leads me to believe that his stuff is getting moved way up and he's going to be a way more important character, probably fill the role of a handful of other characters, get blended. Um, so let me let me ask you a question real quick on this point. So if that is Elaine and we're not going to go to Camelon in the epic moment with. So now we could still go. I mean, possibly right? you, you, could, you could still you go to Camelon. Like exactly. That, that's a really like you just Camelin's don't run into her. Yeah, you just don't run into her. That's what I was thinking is they do something else in Camelin and they show us that because that's kind of a big location to leave out in the beginning unless they're just bypassing it all together and they're going to show us Loghain somewhere else. Like, are we going to Tarvalin instead? Like, there's a lot of I other Aes Sedai. I'm actually, I actually, I, I'm, I'm starting to think that we're not going to Tarvalin season one. I think it's going to be season two because imagine a season two trailer yeah. Where it's like, oh, you get to see the White Tower for the first time. We've heard about it. Yeah. And then we yeah. go there for season two, which I think that's a better place to do it, especially if you're going to have men in this season. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're going to see men and Elaine. And I think, because I think season one, you're still going to be exploring the idea that Egwene and Rand are going to end up together. I think that's going to be, that's, that's going to be something. So. Yeah. Um. So uh, we'll we'll keep going here. The other person it could be starts with an E L. This Elida, maybe. I mean, that's the only other person I can think oh, of that starts okay. with an E L. But I don't think yeah. that that's as likely. Um. Okay. So he says, "Do you have the plot of all the seasons roughly mapped out?" He says, "Yes." Between seasons one and two, uh, we made a rough map of how the series could break down into seasons. It can always change, obviously, but it's important to know where we are going and how we are getting things to build it right. Um, he says, I, if Amazon Prime keeps us around for the long haul. If? Well. Where is the, I mean. We Matt. talked about we talked about this a little bit. We talked about this a little bit on our Bend the Knee channel. The streaming wars are upon us, my friend. Ah, uh, dude. HBO, I... HBO, HBO Max is merging with Discovery. And they're going to immediately be the like they're going to it's going to be Netflix, Disney Plus, HBO in that order. And Amazon sitting there at fourth place. And now the rumors right now are that Amazon is looking at spending around nine billion dollars to go get MGM Studios. That's the big sort of business news rumors right now because they don't want to be left behind. Now, MGM Studios are the people they their biggest sort of asset is the James Bond franchise. But. Uh, I mean, obviously you don't, you don't, you don't look at, you don't look at from a business perspective, you don't look at HBO saying we're making moves and you're just going to sit there at the wayside Yeah, and you're spending $500 million on Lord of the Rings. I mean, that's, that's the sad truth of this thing. If the, if seasons this... one and two don't, don't get great numbers, we might not get a season three. And this is where Rafe, we are call. I mean. <laughs> I need him to go through an arc, a survivor arc like we have never seen before. I Man, need him. You got to win. I, I I don't care what it takes. Get the horn. Do whatever. Rally the troops. Right? Call the banners. Because if this comes out to be some like really clutch, like, I don't know what the budget is. If the, it, it, I'm sure there's reports. I think the budget we heard. We was don't, it, I, don't, just, I definitely don't think. Everyone's saying big. Yeah, Ray, uh, um, Roseman Pike said it was big, and she was on a James Bond movie. James Bond, yeah. I, albeit the worst, ja albeit the worst James Bond movie, but hey. she was in a James Bond movie. Yeah, well, it yeah. is. It's, uh, that's, okay. It is. Right. Um, not that she was bad in it, but it's just it's, it's no, not. She's it's the worst great. Bond movie. Sorry. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so is Pierce Brosnan and Halle Berry in their own respect. Right. But that was just bad script. So yeah. you can't. I don't blame that on. I don't blame that on her. Um, but for her to say that, oh, the budget in this is huge, all of them have sort of, everyone that's sort of spoke on it said, like the, some of the directors have said, like big, huge open field battles and things. That's where, we, that's where we've been sort of hesitant on this show and like worried about when it's going to come out because I, I think it has a window. It, it's, yeah. if, it, if it comes out next, if, if it comes out next year, 
after House of the Dragon, and then you've got Shadow and Bone. That's a new fantasy yeah. thing. And then, if, I mean, that Lord of the Rings show is not waiting. You don't spend $500 million on a show no. and say it's coming in 2022 and no. say, no, it's got to wait till, I mean. Well, what you hope is that, really, like, if, 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 you're, if you're Rafe, you're saying, okay, that's they're, they're they're putting a lot of money to that. If that's super successful, it drives people there looking at Amazon Prime more. You know, what else do you guys have here? Well, here's Wheel of Time. So this is, I mean, I just want him to, I, I'm sure there's a pressure and a stress. I can't even imagine what all this is like with COVID and trying to figure out like who do you hire, directors, the cat. It's such a good looking cast. Rafe is a cool, like he's passionate. You know, you've got to say like when, when you hear him talk on these stories and you hear him answer uh, questions, he's a little cheeky, he's a little back and forth. Sounds like the writer's room is, is fun and there's people really talking about the details and really paying attention to the details. He talks about the dagger. He talks about um, Tom's guitar. Decisions are being made. And I'm hoping, because we were very optimistic and I think sometimes you get kind of like, well, I don't know, some things have, things have gotten leaked, and we're going to get to that in a second, which is like, hey, you guys weren't supposed to see that, that Trolloc, that unfinished product. That's unfortunate because I hope that doesn't skew what we're thinking about this show because that wasn't finished. We're just showing you little bits and pieces that aren't fully done. At, you know? Right. Anyways, I'm just... It's how it goes. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's how it goes. And, and, and remember, it got shut down for the show got shut down for COVID and all that stuff. So that delayed it. So to me, I think maybe this was actually. I think it. I'm. I was kind of doing some math in my head. I think that the show probably would have come out now. I think it were. It probably would have been out like in spring of 2021. Okay. Do, look, like thinking about it, because the fact that they're going to go shoot season two almost immediately leads me to think. Because you then you need time to edit. It's usually like three at, at the earliest, like three months, but it's usually more about six months is when it's going to come out. Um, so if they start shooting it, it takes six to eight weeks. We're talking it's done. And so season two essentially would be done filming, um, let's say, early August. Then that means you're looking at a spring release. So I think that we might get this this november and then we might get season two next summer and then we i think lord of the rings is going to be your i think lord if i what i would do is if i um lord of the rings is probably going to be black friday of 22 that's my guess mm -hmm. okay okay that's my that's my that's that's my guess that's that's my guess because people have it off it's the holiday season people are getting ready to have time off that that's also kind of like streaming things are, are releasing that day too it's kind of like oh like kind of a yeah you know thing because hey go buy go buy a kindle tablet on black friday and you get a year worth of amazon prime oh and you can watch right the new lord of the rings new show. lord of the rings show that yeah. day yeah. yeah good call you gotta think you gotta think about it as the whole deal as amazon is the whole you know the whole deal when you're talking about all this stuff you right know? okay so uh, okay, let's see here. Um, will we see actual weaves or just the end result of channeling? You're gonna see it if you're a woman who can channel. God dang it, Ray! Sounds to me like the budget. Sounds to me like the budget is. It's been cut. It's tiny. <laughs> it's cut. Something's <laughs> going on, man. It's like when I hear Rafe talk about the budget, it's like small. Hold your horses. Maybe it's because yeah. he worked on Agents of Shield and he was working with Disney, and they're just like, spend whatever you want. Who knows? I mean, I, I think it's also it, like... Doesn't Amazon have more money than Disney? I mean, Amazon's I like got to be... I mean, Disney's, I think, worth like $200 billion. Amazon's got to be worth like in the trillions of dollars. I mean, I think Apple's like $2 trillion. I mean, come on. I don't know, man. I it, it I think also, too, with what Rafe does, he picks the questions, obviously, right? He picks the ones he wants to reply to. And I think he finds ones that are worded in such a way that he can be kind of like, well, I can kind of play with this a little bit and maybe hint at some things that are because the channeling is a big thing. I know people want to actually understand how does it look? What's the weave going to be like? And I do think that is a wait and find out. You know what I mean? Watch and find out because I, I would I can't wait to see the first weave. And if I see it in a trailer, cool, but I want to see it fully produced the whole thing. And and I don't know. They're, re they're probably still figuring that out. They probably did some. They filmed some hand motions and stuff, but. It's all After Effects yeah. stuff they're going to be doing. But I don't know. 
Yeah. So you got to get it in there. Can we get some more? I just looked it up. $1.6 trillion. Trillion. I mean, can we get a little extra money for the budget here, can we guys? Get, just come on, please. We are huge fans. We <laughs> want – give Rafe what he needs. I mean, you're probably paying your – you're probably paying executives that you fire like $60 million as severance pay. Can we just cut that down and God. throw a little more into the Wheel of Time budget here? My gosh. Jamie, <laughs> uh, Christmas. He says, how far should we go into the books if we don't want season one to spoil things for us? Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. hold on a second. He says, this question is so cleverly worded to trick me that I have to respond to it out of sheer respect. And that's all he says. Yeah, he's not telling us so. a darn thing. Yep. He's not telling us a darn. He's not telling us a darn. That was, that was a well uh, worded question in that. He says, yeah. um, how are you balancing the numerous POVs in the books versus focusing on Rand? He says, as I've always said, we are adapting the whole series, not just the eye of the world. And I really think this is an ensemble series. So the first season is as well. This is huge. All the, I, he's been saying this, Matt. He really has. And like he is going to, this is going to be different. It is going to be vastly different than... It's not a book by book. It's you have an arc. You have we have the first three books to kind of look at. Maybe I mean, like you said, you brought the low gain reference. There's a there's a thread of low gain story that takes place that he might say all of that is coming forward. And if it does, that means White Tower stuff, tons of things that could be coming forward. It won't surprise me if some of that stuff's already in season two and we're getting right to it. It's cool. Yeah. It's gonna be just like Game of Thrones. Because it, both in the chapters and in this as well, both in the chapters and the TV show, you just it's actually easier from a POV perspective in the show because you're not telling a story through somebody's eyes. You're just showing us a scene that happens and you're portraying it as a scene. So it's actually not POV. It's third person. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. you're turning first person chapters into third person. The same thing that did, you know, Game of Thrones is a great example. But, you know, in, in that and in just like in this, it may be the chapter may be Nynaeve's point of view but she's talking to a Gwen, right so yep it's just over For sure. here you know yep it's, so yeah that, that that's not i don't think really going to be any anything different he says um will we see forsaken in season one he says some people see forsaken everywhere great answer yeah great answer yeah. <laughs> uh uh, okay, here's a here's a straight up answer. This is our first sort of just absolute yes. Okay. Will we see Narg? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. That they're showing us the Which they're showing is, us the is, attack. Is, yeah. In the very beginning, uh, at, yeah. with with Rand and well, his I think father. We saw, I think we saw. I think we saw Narg in the. I think we saw what? Narg in that Moraine teaser. Was that him? <laughs> Was uh, that Narg? Well, we weren't. Yeah, we weren't supposed to see him. Um. Yeah, apparently we weren't supposed to see that. I think it's coming up, I so, think. So, who knows? Yeah. yeah. Did any of the actors end up becoming fans of the book series after getting cast? He says, I'm not going to spoil who, but two of the core cast are in the read-off right now, and I think one of them may have finished the series. Uh, that's awesome to me because I love the book series. Rafe loves it. I, that's why I'm so... I, I am pumped that you have fans who are passionate about the series uh, he and Sarah are are in there checking things. They've got other writers. They've got people who are familiar with it. And then some of the cast members are reading it. It's a great story. And they do kind of want to know more about their character. How should I portray this? You had um, uh, some of the cast were reaching out to different Wheel of Time fans when they didn't really know the series. Like, hey, what when you think of Matt, what do you think of? When you think of Rand or other characters, you know, in the story, what do you think of? Which is, I think is cool. Good on them. Yeah. How many brands or Trollocs did you create for the show? He says, we've learned and we we leaned into the books and tried to have Trollocs have as much individual character as possible. My favorite is the one we call Betty. That's cool. cool. I, yeah, th I like that's that. I, and it's important that they were they are different and they are described with, you know, beaks and snouts and in all sorts of different things. So you're going to have uh, different versions of Trollocs making them look kind of more individual, like a like. Uh, like, because they did it with, with the orcs, right? In Lord yeah, of the Rings, think... it's important to do. Exactly, Urukai and the whole deal, and they all yeah. looked, all looked in, yeah, unique and everything. Um, will season two take us to a lot of new locations? How big can the world get? Best thing about the Wheel of Time is the world keeps getting bigger and deeper, and we've got a lot, uh, and we've got to deliver on that in the show. Agreed. 
Um, that I just sort of yeah I just expect yeah expect that. Um, he says please ask Amazon if they do a sweepstakes to be a fan for a fan to be an extra in the show, and he just sort of mm -hmm. shot that back at Amazon Prime Video. So maybe you never know. Um, loved the first look at Trollocs. When are we getting more? Sadly, there hasn't been a first look at the Trollocs yet, as we've gotten, I think, with, like, the guitar and some of that other stuff where they kind of do, like, a special video just on it. Um, there was actually some leaked raw footage. We had to make, um, we had to make the show. It's, we work hard to make the show. It's always a shame when you guys see stuff outside of the way we have it planned. I'll tell you one thing. When I met with the director of season two who'd seen the pilot, they all had one thing in to say. Those Trollocs. Mm. Um, so okay, so maybe That's... that Moraine thing, maybe she is wearing a blouse, maybe she is just wearing her clothes, yeah, and it was just a zoomed in thing. I, mean, I think so. I think we might have been right on that, yeah. Or we I, said, Hey, they they said, Hey, we're gonna do a close up for your face, it's gonna be a little teaser, yeah, or yeah, exactly, and the rest it's... is gonna be green screen, yeah, or not, yeah, not finished product, whatever it might be. Maybe, yeah, they're throwing things together to make a little teaser. I mean, who, we have no idea. And I think that's important because they wanted us to only see the zoomed in version. And there's reasons why. Yeah. And Rafe's saying that. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, excited to progressively spiral downwards into raving madness. Uh, he says, it's funny that you think I'm not already there. Um, are you planning to do a book per season or are there adaptations and inclusions from multiple? He says, we have to combine. He says, you know, it would be, our characters would be 45 years old, uh, when we finish otherwise. Yeah. We, yeah. Um, we read the one about Lance Cloak. He says, uh, so I think, uh, these last two here, I'll finish one. Have you started writing season two? He says, yeah, the awesome thing. Uh, season two writers have been working hard throughout the year, so we already have a bunch of stuff ready to go, which I think we, we've we talked about before. He said, you know, that is kind of the, I guess, advantage of that is you can kind of get ahead of the curve for season two. Um, so this I found to be probably the most interesting question here. Um, he says, who has been the hardest character to write for so far? Perrin is the hardest. His interior monologue in the book is the biggest part of his character. So bringing him out uh, in the show is always something we have to build really consciously. Lucky, um, Marcus Ruda just uh, ex exudes Perrin in every minute, so it makes our lives a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's actually, that's, that's, that's interesting because he does have a lot of, like, how do you, when you're adapting something, that is an interesting thing to think about. Like, we learn about Perrin through his thoughts about other characters and then you know how often do we see what well, we do see Rand thinking about Perrin or thinking about Matt and so you have to kind of take what those characters are thinking about each other and then what does that look like mm -hmm. and how do we how do we see that you know uh work so I think it's cool uh, it's cool that the actor is like taking that That's in and, and reading about Perrin and his thoughts and saying this is he's is he kind of this is is he brooding? Is is he is he uh, mischievous? What what type of individual is Perrin? And then I need to portray that. So yeah, yeah. So anyway, that was kind of it. Um, so yeah, we got some answers. Uh, I I would say the biggest one we were kind of leaning on anyway, but uh, I think this kind of confirms for me Elaine not in season one. Yep, and then I wonder all about Camelin and everything uh, that that comes along with it. So either way, I think it's whether you have Camelin or not. I, I like you said, showing off big new locations in season two, saying if you like season one and this is epic, guess what? We're going to new places, new cities. That's what we like about the books. We've heard about the waste. Now we're going there. We'll hear about Camelin. Then we might go season two, or maybe we get there in season one. But we've heard about the White Tower, and then we'll get there. So. Um, I'm cool with that, and I think this will be. I think I think it's going to be good. I, I really think sometimes, and we obviously are just joking a lot of times we about a lot, yeah. You know, some of the things with Rafe, just because uh, we're, ah, you know, we're so desperately wanting this to be just epic and awesome, and I think I like Wheel of Time so much that I just want to see, I just want to see the dragon ride again on the winds of time. I've been wanting to see it for years. I, I reread the series because I want the dragon to ride again and i want the last battle to come and i want him to fa you know face the dark one so ah oh, man i just hope it i hope it goes off really well and this is um this is encouraging overall this is nice to kind of hear season one done we're greenlit for season two we're, we're at least getting two seasons 
and to me that actually normally is a pretty good thing right uh, a show gets canceled after two seasons i think they might say hey can you guys get if it's if it's bad they might say can we get this done in two to three instead of your eight seasons arc maybe we're going to do five because it wasn't as great but i still want to see a finished kind of wheel of time product i hope they give it it's room to breathe and i hope we have eight seasons if not more that would be awesome so absolutely absolutely all right guys hey leave us a comment let us know what you think uh are we gonna see elaine are we not what is Logan's role gonna be in season one when are we getting the trailer all questions still to find answers to so guys with that uh hit the like button hit the subscribe button thank you for watching and remember that the grave is no bar to our call